Garage for episode 10 of the Turbo Tunnel Build. Uh, this episode is going to be entirely about HP tuners. I'm going to do a screen capture of what I've done to a standard tune out of a VY1 tunner to make it run on boost, new injector details, map sensor details, and just generally what you need to do to get started. I know in the last episode I was saying I was going to use the HP Tuners Tune Repository and it was actually down when I went to do this. It is since now back going but I ended up starting from scratch so I could actually learn how to do it. Now everything I do in this video I've done and tried. I've actually tuned the tunner up to four and a half pounds, got it all sorted and I know that now I can give you this information, share this information with you guys and I know it's going to, going to be right and it's going to work. So it's not going to suit everybody's car, you know, automatic, manual, different models, electric throttle body, there's a few variations but generally if you do what I, I'm about to show you, you should be able to start slowly making boost baby steps and checking, checking your AFRs and getting your tune right and you'll get it to go well because the, the tunner is actually going well. Um, you know, I've, I've daily driven it now to, to my workplace about 80 kilometres away there and back and it's it's going well. So it works, I'll go through it now, show you what I did. First thing I like to do is make sure your laptop is up to date with all the updates for the software. Mine's Hewitt and Packard, so it's all updated. Restart the computer. Make sure it's all fresh, ready to go. Nothing worse than it locking up on you when you're stuffing around, tuning it, especially when you're writing or reading from the ECU in the car. You don't want stuff to go wrong because, well, they call it bricking the computer, but you can definitely cause some damage and cause yourself some headaches that you don't need. Getting started, the first thing that I would do before writing your new tune would be certainly download the newest version of HP Tuner's software. So obviously bring up the HP Tuner's website, hptuners.com, log in if you've got a login and you'll go to the downloads part, make that come up. Internet's a little bit slow at my house at this time of night. Everyone in the neighbourhood is on it. And then, yeah, download VCM Suite, the latest full version. This is the one that I would go for. I'm more of a complete sort of a guy. This beta or whatever the hell that is, it's, uh, yeah, it's not quite a finished product, so I always go for the full version. Go through the prompts, download that, get yourself all up to date. To open the editor. Obviously also go out to your car, plug your dongle into the OBD2 port, plug the USB into the side of your laptop, and you'll open up the editor here, and you will want to read the vehicle. You want to read what's in there. That will come up and you'll press read. I'm not out of my vehicle, I'm sitting in my office so I'm not doing it. I've already done this. Do that, read it and your tune will come up. I'll just open the, the standard tune that I've already previously done and it'll be the same. So after you read it, everything's there. This is what you'll have. You'll have your standard tune, everything you've got up here, all your folders, engine, engine diagnostic, so forth. So you're at this step. First thing you need to do is once you have this read, is to save as. So file, go down to save as, and save something under your that describes your card, you know what I mean? Like For me, I saved this one as a stock BY1 ton of 5.7 manual. Clear description of what it is, because you might do other cars, 
as time goes on and it's always good to keep a standard file so yep that's the that's the standard file you've saved it save as the the next step will be to change the operating system to a two bar or three bar I don't know how much boost or what um, map sensor you're running whether it's a two or a three I'm just running a two so I'm just going to be changing the operating system to a two bar now you've saved the standard file so that's all good to go now you can go into your operating system and you, under this folder here operating system and you'll see here it'll say speed density two bar and that changes a few things inside the inside the programming your V table goes up so it's higher it gets the KPA that you need for two bar which I can't remember I think it's 210 KPA Aspir aspirated with no boost it's only 110 I'm pretty sure I can't really remember another thing to note here too is if your car before you turbo it before you're doing this has already had like a mapless tune or something like that more than likely it's had a speed density enhanced operating system put in there now the, you can't ch once you've got that in your programming you can't change back from speed density enhanced to speed density two bar you need to reload or have a standard tune a standard file like the first one you get and then apply restart again and then apply your speed density two bar I learned that the hard way it took me a while to figure it out but yeah you definitely need to apply your apply your your code modification to a standard file you just this will be blank if you try and do it with something that's already got a mapless tune so two bar apply code this will come up read it do exactly what it says obviously it, it can brick your PCM if you don't do it you've really just gotta you save the standard one once you press that okay save again as a new one so save as so you'll go you just chose two bar so you go straight away save as and then it won't be a stock VY1 ton of 5.7 manual and then I'll just add with two bar operating and that's a good start save it Alright, simple as that. Then you close this. They like to close this and then reopen it. That's one of the things you have to do. And then open your two bar one back up again with your two bar. And then see how it's blank? That's it, no more choices. You're locked into two bar. Next step, we'll be doing the the mathless part of the tune. We get rid of our math sensor in our turbo setup. We've got intercooler piping there. Math sensor's gone. So we set up the math fail or the mathless side of the tune. It's pretty important to do. It'll make the the ECU make calculations off the VE table in the map sensor rather than off the math calibration and the, the math frequency so it's important to get rid of your your math sensor details in the ECU so it will work properly first one we go to is the engine folder down into airflow general and you'll get down here you'll see math calibration you can pop that out and I just zero it out pretty simple click in the corner selects them all zero equals that way it'll just never read frequency it'll just stuff it up which is which is what we want next thing we do is go into engine diagnostic and we'll go into the math frequency fail and that'll be in the airflow so here the fail we want it to set at zero it'll fail instantly it'll never make any calculations which is which is good. Zero. 
maximum delta airflow, something else to do with the, the math. I just like to max it out. I don't want this thing making any calculations. Maximum is 256. So we'll just max that out. We'll probably have a whinge. No, it's all good. Maxed out. These ones here are for electric throttle, so they'll already be zeroed out. And another thing that we will do while we're in this part here too is we'll rectify any map sensor codes that will be caused by having a larger map sensor. Obviously we're going to reach higher KPA and more airflow as well. So these tables here have got to do with exceeding airflows and pressures. Obviously we're going to exceed standard parameters because we've got a turbo going on the damn thing. So let's max out this um, error maximum map. We'll max that out. You can see the, the maximum is always in the bottom corner. It'll say 0 to 105. So set the maximum here to 105. It also states there that this test won't happen if you put these deep, just this in there. So, and the minimum, of course, zero. TPS TPS test I'll leave. It's good to know if that stuff's up. There's no reason to change that. But the calculated air mass for the map error also max this out. It's 320 kPa. Select the whole lot. 320 equals Okay, and the minimum, which is zero. Equals, okay. Now one last part of the, the math list is the codes. Each car will be different here. These first three, mass of volume air. Now you want these to be no mill light and I'll turn the SES off. M3. You cannot have this on no error reported. It's, you can choose here no error. The car will not start if it's on no error reported. It needs the error to be no, noticed in the ECU so that it makes it run on the VE table and so forth. So it has to be no mill lot on M3. And that part of the mathless setup is done. It will unplug your math sensor, it will run, it will run on the other tables. Okay, in this section we're going to be looking at locking this ECU into open loop operation only. So that, that means it just runs on the tables, the ECU itself doesn't make any of its own changes. And we'll also go through all the necessary tables to change to stop the ECU from making its own changes so that when we try and tune the fueling and the timing you know we're not trying to tune something that's constantly changing we have to lock it down and stop it from making fuel trims and so on and so forth I'll, I'm not going to go right into it but that's the gist of what we have to do here now we'll start in the engine engine table airflow and into general there's one in here called cylinder charge temperature if you actually read it it tells you if you're going anything with force induction to disable it that's a good enough reason for me to disable it I didn't even look into the, the meaning of it shut it down then I'll move along into the fuel tables this is where we we shut down the, the, the closed loop operations and the way we do that is through the engine coolant temp versus IAT here and that's under the open and closed loop under the fuel fuel table open and closed loop so this is what it takes the coolant temp versus intake air temperature in the table sets the coolant temperature required to enable the closed loop in relation to the inlet air temperature so what we'll do is we we make it so that it can never ever reach it to enable it so you just max it out down in the corner, if you, if you just lean on it, 141. So 141 degrees Celsius equals that. That there will stop you from going into closed loop operation. It will just lock you in open loop. And now I'll leave my turbo cars 
in open loop the whole time. While I'm tuning them, the short short term fuel trims disabled, so I don't even have them. Later on, I'll probably put an oxygen sensor in it and just activate the short term fuel trims just in open loop. I'm, I'll never go back to closed loop operation. Got a few mates that run just open loop. Everything works out fine. It's just a it's a more simple way of doing it. Closed loop operation, it's, it just opens up so many more tables that are capable of changing changing the parameters on what your engine's running on, which can be risky when you're throwing heaps of boost into a standard engine. Next thing we take off or disable is the long-term fuel trims. Obviously, we do not want this thing to change anything, so disable. We don't want it to trim nothing, so disable that. It'll stop from trimming fuel in the long term, changing the VE table. Now we'll move across into the cat over temp lean cruise folder. Head into here, cat over temp. Well, I don't have a cat. If you've got a cat, you're losing power, and I'd get rid of it. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, no cat for me, so there's just no need for that. And also lean cruise. I don't want it dropping into lean cruise. So it's pretty simple. Just the word lean is no good when it comes to boost, so shut it down. 412 kilometers an hour for it to come into lean cruise. Well, that's never going to happen. So, you know, that's a good way to shut that one down. And then also in Spark here, we have to shut down the burst knock retard now. I had trouble with this when I originally started tuning. It was it was retarding my timing, and it was actually this the burst knock because it's just bringing air in so much quicker, and it's climbing up the VE table so much sooner, and it's being quicker. It, it freaks out, and that's this burst knock retard. It's just it takes your timing out, no good, and ends up falling flat on its face in the power, and it'll miss and carry on because there's no damn timing, and it goes flat. So. Um, yeah, you definitely um, max this out. So it's eight grams, which is huge. Max out, max it out. That way, it'll never, never go into, never get any burst knock. We still want knock retard. So if it rattles, like if the knock sensors pick up, rattle. It will bring, it'll take timing, but this burst knock, it just predicts when it thinks it's going to knock. So it's not even knock, so it's, it's, it's what it thinks. So get rid of that, make it so that's not going to come in. Um, and another thing is knock learn. If it does have a bit of a rattle, I don't want it changing things. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll change the, we'll change the KPA, so minimum KPA to the, to the maximum amount. Which is 105 there. We'll just actually zero that out. Maximum RPM, 8,000. Never going to get to 8,000. I might, but I'd have to bounce through the rev limit pretty damn hard. Minimum engine coolant temp will be 140. The minimum intake air temp will be 140. Just give it no reason to try and make a calculation. Total retard doesn't matter. Enable multiplier. So knock learn multiplier. You can just leave that. That'll there shut it down. So that should work fine for knock learn, burst knock retard, both shut down now. Alright. The next table will be torque management. There's obviously going to be um, items in here that will change things that you don't want it to. First thing is the maximum torque. You don't want this thing is going to make more torque than it's ever made standard. I don't know how it would make calculations, but you just max it out. That way it's not going to freak out when it suddenly starts making some decent power. Just try and shut down a lot of the parts of the CCU to stop it making all these calculations and changing things. Now maximum torque here, I just, oh, just max it all out. Oh, it's already maxed out, there you go, standard, probably because it's manual, and that's probably for automatic transmission, then ones. That's fair enough. And then spark retard, or 
torque reduction. Um, you really want to zero that out like it says. You don't want it to. You don't want torque reduction at all. There's no trash control, nothing like that. So zero that out so it never, never torque reducts anything. Shut that part of it down. So that that'll be it. Uh, into abuse. Uh, that's all good. There's nothing else in there. So that'll shut down a lot of the mumbo jumbo, so to speak, of everything that goes through there. Burst knocks gone. Knock learns shut down. Uh, the lean crews shut down. It's never going to get there. The cat over temps disabled. That's good. Open and close loop. Long term fuel trim is disabled. Yes, and we've made it so that's impossible for it to enter closed loop operation. That is very good. And we should have got the uh, airflow. Yep, cylinder charge temperature is also shut down. So this section, we will look at the spark advance. Now this is standard spark advance for a standard car, it's never been played with. So if you go into, I'm going to show you, this engine, spark table into advance, and you go into the main spark advance, high octane, and you have a look at that table. Up to 1.2 grams of cylinder air mass, you know, maximum time again here is 10, 11, 12 degrees. Now this this maxes out as it makes boost. It has obviously more cyl cylinder air mass, but it'll just it'll just peak out this timing row right here up in the boost. And you you know with a bit of research online, you'll know that 10, 11, 12 degrees of advance is not a huge amount. So the standard timing timing table will actually work in a low boost application. Most of the time when you get a tune when it's aspirated, they'll actually start adding a lot of timing in for an aspirated tune. The, the standard tune, standard GM timing is very is weak and low, so they will always liven it up. So in this, in this application, the standard table, more than fine. You don't have to change. The only thing you do is always make the high and lows the same. So I, I, I copy the whole table in the high, which it looks like a good timing table. And I throw it over into the low. So your low is even a lot lower. I always just make it the same. I don't want this thing to try and make decisions between different things. I just try and make it all stable. Paste that all in. Same, same. Every time I change anything to the timing, I'll change it the same to the high and the low. So that is the, the timing taken care of. There's nothing else you really have to play with when it comes to timing. That would be more than enough. Let's insert some injector data. I've got Siemens Deca 80 injectors. It didn't come with injector data, so I searched the web for injector data to suit HP tuners, and there was a, a thread that I found on LS1 Tech. This guy, Jake Fusion, it's a sticky, so it's easy to find. He has the Excel spreadsheets for all the data that you need specific for HP tuners which made it very easy for me and also gives you some tips and tricks on how to insert the data when you have a boost reference fuel pressure regulator versus not mine is reference so like it says here you just take the values at zero and carry them across the same all the way across because it will increase fuel pressure so that's the, how that works I'll show you the spreadsheet this is the spreadsheet. Tells you everything you need to know on there to suit Siemens Deca. 80 C's, 80 CC's, starting with the injector flow rate. So this is one of the things that you, know, you would just take the value at zero and all the way across. So it's 94.62, and that's at zero. So you go back over into your into your editor. In the engine, fuel, you go into general, and it's under the center here. Injector control, flow rate, 
versus KPA. And here, this table is where you would insert that number, which I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. Let me go back and get the number. I have to say, when this laptop is screen capturing, it just runs so much slower. Okay, so it's 94.62. You can even copy it if you want, just so you don't forget. You can choose it, right click. Should be at right click. It's just going that slow. There we go. Copy. Where is it? There it is. Copy that. So that way you can't get stuffed up. Back into your editor. Choose it all. Paste it in. Equals. Done. Pretty simple. I won't go through it all because it is time consuming but you get the idea every single thing that's on the spreadsheet the off the offsets the pulse corrections the short pulse adders it's all on there all all the stuff you need for your injectors all down through the center here you just transfer it all over it's definitely more injector specific data so it's you got to get the data that suits your injector and then that's where you insert it same as this offset, all the offsets, because we've got a rising rate fuel reg, will only take the data that's in the zero column here, and then we'll put it all the way across, because that's what it is. That's the data for my injectors for my setup. So it's different from from injector to injector, setup to setup, but it just gives you a rough idea of where you, where it all has to go and in here. So once you get all that done, your injectors will be set up. I'll get that done. I'm not going to give you 15 minutes of me putting numbers in there when it might not even suit your injectors. So just an idea of how to do it. So I'm going to put that in. Uh, while we're in, while we're still going here, this is a two-bar operating system. So the your, your two bar map sensor that you've got which would probably be a GM one which mo which mine is too this, these tables are already set 200 kPa with the 10.3 sensor offset I've found that to work you can change the offset depends how high you are over sea level but for where I am which is a fraction above sea level that, that works pretty well so that gets your injectors and your map sensor out of the way Now for the main volumetric efficiency table, we need to set this up. When you change the operating system over to the two bar or three bar, you'll find that in your engine, airflow, general, into your primary VE table, there's nothing in there. It's because you've changed operating system. You need to get you need to get your base data from your standard car, so open you can open up your editor again and open up your standard tune that you saved at the start. See so stock VY one tunner, five point seven manual, dead standard tune hasn't been changed. So now I have up to hundred and five KPA all the way at eight thousand A V E table to use. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but it's dead standard from the factory GM, so highlight the whole lot, copy, no access, you just want to copy. Then you can go then you can go back to your two two bar tune that you've been working on and you can simply paste. And that you'll see has now given you up to 105. 104 kPa is how would you say at the top of aspirated no boost as soon as you go over 105 it's start it's all starting to make boost so up here we really want to multiply the fuel from here and and one thing I do note is if you have a look at the table like this 
So you can see where it's up to 105 now. It's got a bit of like a torque curve in the fueling table. So I'll, to set up the rest of it in the boost, give yourself something to base on, is what I like to do is copy the curve. So you get you get the ups and downs of the torque of the engine. It's not 100% accurate, but it's definitely a good starting point. So what I like to do is you copy all the way over on the last bit of info that you've got copy it then each one on each line you can paste you, know, you can use control V which is a lot quicker so you can um, choose the choose the line control V paste them all in control V control V control V I'll cut this so you don't have to watch me do it all and try and make the video a bit shorter. You can see the it's the same values from 105 kPa all the way up to 210 to give you the top of your table. And the only problem is that's flat. As we start building boost, kPa will manifold pressure. You're going to need more fuel, so this should be still rising. So you've got a bit of a standard torque curve in your fuel map. So what I'll do is go back into this one and then I'll go to the bottom line here and a general rule that I've found and researched that you know one bar like one atmosphere is a certain amount of fuel so if you go to two bar it should be double the amount of fuel so you need to add a hundred percent that's excessive our engines aren't, aren't that efficient I find a good safe range is you know you could go eighty or ninety percent more so you know you could easily add eighty percent to that top run. Right, have a look at your table, you'll see the top is peaked right out. Then you highlight here all the way across to eight thousand, then up to your boost level, hundred and five KPA. And in that section highlight, you go to this function up here, and that is this one, sorry. Interpolate between vertical bounds, so it will make an average between the top and the bottom and give you, you know, a ramped effect. So I've interpolated it, and then you have a look at your map, and you can see it's ramped. It. You've got a torque curve in it, but you've got increased fuel, and I find that. Is not a bad what not a bad way to start. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Is not a bad way to start. You can rotate this around and have a look at your curve. So you can see that as you come up into your boost, into your RPM, you know it's just going to be getting fuel. So that is a good way to create a VE table from scratch to get you going to get you started. Final section of the editor modifications on your tune. I've saved these bits to last because when we move on to the next bit which is in the scanner the, these parts we're about to change which is the, the power enrich and the the power enrich and the um, boost enrichment these tables they have a lot to do with the scanner. Now these tables here the boost enrichment EQ ratio versus map is how you set the target air fuel ratio in your scanner. So when you start to scan and start to log runs on your scanner, it's going to command an AFR. Like it's it's going to ask what it wants. It's going to request an AFR. This is where you set that request in boost from 110 kPa kPa up to whatever boost level you're going to. In here is where it will you'll set what it's what it's looking for, what its target is. It's pretty important to understand this. So now boost enrichment is obviously from 110 kPa up to full boost, whatever you're gonna run. So and then you come down here and you've got power enrichment which is full throttle, you know, getting into it even three quarter throttle lock you're into it, you know what I mean? So you're into it and this is how you set your AFR for 
acceleration or you know getting on the get on the gas pedal making making some power but with no boost so it's up to it's up to 110 kPa this goes from 15 kPa where it starts and goes up to 110 so then you set your AFR there and it's rampable you can set it you know what I mean it's you might you might ask for you know 13s low in the RPM then you want to come up into high 13s and uh, low 13s and you want to make 12s to 12 and a half when you start revving without any boost when you come into boost comes over into the boost enrichment then we have to change this so you start requesting low boost okay you know start coming down in the 12s and you start getting up to five pounds of boost and you want to get get into the high 11s and it's an over then six or seven pounds of boost you want 1150s AFR this is how you set what you want it won't make it do it but it will set what you want and then also then obviously under 15 kPa what sets your target is is your, is your storage over here which is in your general fuel general your storage metric which is 14.63 which is perfect for pump fuel so that is your target on your VE table before you get into the impound enrichment then over 15 kPa no boost you're on the the pound enrichment table here this is what's going to set your AFR then once you start making boost up on the boost enrichment EQ ratio now to set them is can be confusing it's it's a multiplier. If you read down the bottom here, it'll explain to you when you're on it. But it's a multiplier, so the values relate directly to the storage AFR, and the resulting commanded AFR is storage divided by this PE multiplier. So that's pretty simple. So 2,000 RPM, 1.089. So at 2,000 RPM, it's going to be commanding what? So you get your calculator out and you go 14.63 divided by 1.089 equals 13.4. So it's commanding 13.4 on your power enrichment from 0 RPM which you won't hit because you'll always be above 15 kPa but it'll be commanding 13.4 all the way up and then you can see obviously the number changes gets higher so it starts commanding richer more fuel so it'll end up going to 1.18 just to check where that's at same thing again 14.63 oh you bugger the dot didn't work 14.63 divided by 1.18 equals 12, 12.39 which is good that's close 12.5 is what I would normally ask for so that to be honest that pound enrichment table there is pretty damn good it's a little bit late probably bring some more fuel in a bit earlier here play off it a bit this is a bit personal preference you know what you want for me, probably a little bit more fuel from 4,000, so I might drag this AFR ratio, AFR ratio back here, uh, bring a bit more fuel in, and then, then you have to completely build your boost enrichment. So obviously you would start from 100, you would want 12.5 12, AFR at 100, which is the end of the power enrichment here, so it's 1.18. EQ ratio, you want 1.18 here because you know that's going to be 12.3 or whatever it said. One point one eight, and then really from there to 140 kPa, which I think is about five pounds of boost you're going to start wanting about 11.50 from 140 so calculator out we have this 14.63 oh, 
Divide that by what you want, which I want 11.5 equals 1.27. So 140. Oh, 140 to the end. I would want 1.27. Which is your 1150s. Probably a little bit lower, but it's just what you want premium. Then from there, you can highlight between the two and interpolate, 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 or interpolate, whatever it is, and that'll smooth it out between vertical bounds and then you've got a nice ramp in on your command and AFR on your boost enrichment so standard it wasn't too bad you check yours every car is a bit different you could smooth this out a bit which I probably will it's not too bad gives you it's just commanded it's not actually what your car is going to fuel but it's what you're going to command you once once we start scanning you'll understand it more but set them up like that Give yourself a nice ramp in, nice and rich in the boost. Plenty of fuel. Not ridiculously rich, but definitely plenty of fuel. And yeah, then you've set the sort of the aspirated power before it starts making boost. It's still in the still in the twelves when it comes up into the RPM, so yeah, that's pretty good. Also in the power rich table. Down in here you've got power and rich delay. Standard it's set to 5500. So it actually doesn't come in until 5500. This will stop it. We want it to come in a lot earlier. We want it to hit that that target table, the EQ ratio, a lot earlier. Now I think going down the highway at the your maximum legal speed limit, so cruising, which is in my car you get about 110 kilometers an hour to just under 2000 rpm so you want you want it to be pretty lean there so 2000 rpm is when you want it to start richening up in the power enrichment table you want it to stay on the ve table up until 2000 rpm with everything that's done here we can go forward and I'd always save as at this point because you're ready to load this to the car so save as again and make up a new name for the tune I'd call it a base tune of some sort for your car so for me it would be the one tonner turbo base tune is what I'm going to make it and save it and that will be ready to load to the car Yep. Yeah, that was pretty long and probably pretty boring. Uh, I tried to keep it as simple as I could. I probably could have went into more detail on some of the explanations on why we're changing certain tables, but sometimes I feel it's a lot of information that's a waste of space, you know what I mean? Like, it's more important. That if I emphasise certain parts to change, then it's a lot more important than some of the, some of the aspects we might have breezed past. But yeah, if you do what we just went through, you know, you're ready to start tuning. At that stage, you sh your car should be able to run and drive around, but make no boost. We'll go into a, f a tuning video in the future, actually out in the car tuning, you know, how to do logs and what to change on your VE table and everything like that, so you can actually start making changes and slowly start creeping into some boost, because remember, you don't want to make no boost unless your AFRs are right, especially on a standard motor, because you know, you'll blow a ring land or heard a bearing or something pretty easily so you just want to take it easy don't overdo it and uh, we'll get there so future video will tune um, for now that'll do for this episode uh, if you liked it if you found it enjoyable hit the like button if you want to see more of this build subscribe and uh, if you want to be notified when I have the next video hit the little bell and it'll tell you and uh, we'll see you on the next one.